Rub up your engines! All right, has this man lost his mind? He traded a RAV4 even for the Subaru Crosstrek, a new one, 2021. Now this is a Crosstrek Sport. So it's pretty much top of the line one. Of course, they're all all wheel drive. It's comparable to the Mazda CX-30, which I just did a video on. Relatively similar type car. The CX-30 that I checked out the other day was a lower end one, the guy paid 25 grand. These listed about the same, but this is a sport. This is the fancy version. But like I say, he traded his late model RAV4 even for it because he wasn't satisfied with the RAV4 in Vermont. The RAV4, he didn't like the handling. They had kind of rocky back and forth. But the main thing was, both of them were all wheel drive. The RAV4, he even had studded snow tires and he got stuck in the snow and he got stuck in the mud, and he's never been stuck with this. You gotta realize Subaru was the first massive pioneer of all-wheel drive systems. As far as I'm concerned, for the money, they make the best all-wheel drive system. Now, there are things out there on Porsches and Audis that are insane technology, but it also blows your pocketbook when you see how much the things cost. This is a lower priced vehicle. I mean, they start at 25 grand. You might get four wheels for a Porsche and Audi for that. Not the whole car, especially not a new one. So in the snow and mud of Vermont, he's much happier with this car. He tried out the RAV4, he didn't like it, he likes this better. There are certain niches for certain vehicles. There are quite a few people I met that didn't like how the RAV4 rode. Realized that even though this is all wheel drive, subcompact SUV crossover, blah, 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 it's based on a Subaru Impreza sedan. So it actually has a lot better ride than the RAV4. You can see this is a unibody construction. It's all based on the sedan. They just turned it into a crossover. And I've just been told by the owner and his wife over here that she got nauseous in the RAV4 from the rocking, and she said she hasn't got nauseous in this yet, and that's his main passenger. So, I mean, they do ride better. Now, interestingly enough, when they first came out with these, people loved them, but they said they can't get out of their own way. Well, they fixed that, as you'll see on it. As you can see here, 2.5 liter. So it's got the same size four-cylinder engine as his RAV4 did, 2.5 liter. But depending on your driving city or highway, this thing gets three to four miles per gallon better gas mods. RAV4 is somewhat boxier, heavier. So he gets better gas mods, but at the same time, it handles better. And yes. It's the four-cylinder Subaru Boxer engine. They fixed head gasket problems decades ago. They don't have head gasket problems anymore. You want something like this. You want a 2.5 liter normally aspirated, because if you look at it, it's not turbocharged. As we look at the front, what's this? It's all metal, because it's got a metal timing chain running the engine. That's what you want. The problem with older Subarus are, they had rubber timing belts and they're interference engines. The belt breaks, pfft, goes the engine. Well, because of this design, this crazy boxer design, two cylinders here, two cylinders here opposed, changing the timing belt on these boxer engines was a real pain in the butt. And often people would get them changed, they get the car back and it run like crap because the mechanics did a lousy job. They were not that easy to replace timing belts on correctly. They're not as simple as say a Toyota that's got the crank, Cam on the top, simple. They wear out a little bit faster, but they're extremely hard to set up perfectly. You gotta have all the Subaru locking tools. A lot of guys say they could put them on, they put them on, they never run right again. Check engine, let it come on, time it'd be off. You don't have to think about it as long as you change your oil every 5,000 miles and use that new GF6 oil. That's all you gotta do to maintain these. Interesting enough, this has a CVT transmission in it. So there's no gears. But it's Toyota had that newer Toyota eight speed automatic transmission, which a lot of people don't like. They're made to maximize gas mods. That's why they have all those extra speeds to get better gas mods. But in order to achieve it, it's always gotta be an optimal gear for optimal gas mods. So they're always hunting for gears and they feel kind of sloppy a lot of times. Now, if you want, you can put it into manual mode, shift it yourself, and it won't have the sloppiness anymore. But there goes your gas saving down the toilet because you're gonna be revving it up higher. This does it by itself with the CVT transmission. The newer CVTs are definitely an improvement over the older ones. As we open the door, zoom in a little, you go by the VIN number, the VIN number is 
JF2. That means it was made in Japan. There's nothing better than a Japanese vehicle made in Japan. Now, I don't know why this is the case, but it is. So the JF means it's made in Japan, right? But if it was made in the United States, it would say 4S instead. Now, to me, that's not very fair. Should have said America, United States, not 4S. They're just doing that because they don't want you to know that it was put together here. But on the positive side, the ones that are put together here in Indiana, the engines and transmissions are still built in Japan. They just ship them over and then they put the car together here. It's not like they're building everything from scratch. You get the same quality engines and transmissions. They're just put together here, kind of like a Lego set. Take a look inside, see what you get. Sounds solid, nice black, little gold trim here because it's sport. Start her up. Sounds like a Subaru, that's for sure. And of course, it's got a nice screen. And I like the screen. This is a screen that is integrated to the dash, right? This isn't some ugly thing that's sticking out on a bump that even blocks your view. It is integrated where it should be. And the things you want to see, there they are up here. You don't have to look all over the place. It's pretty well set up. So it's got a sunroof if you go for that stuff. That doesn't impress me. But it's got various modes for snow. It has heated seats. The wife was cold. We'll turn that off. We don't need that now. Steering wheel for all kinds of modes. It's got everything on it. Fancy warning SOS system and everything on if you get in a wreck. Comfy stylish seats in the front. Check out the back seat. Quite a bit of room. Very stylish back seat. It's got a usual subcompact trunk. And of course, like every Subaru made except for their little racy cars, it's all wheel drive. That's why he got it. He's never got stuck with this in the same places that he's got stuck with the RAV4. Subaru does have a better designed all wheel drive system. Where he lives, he needs it. My son went to the University of Vermont. Boy, I tell you, it snows there and it gets really cold. That's where Subaru's coming to their own. That's how they started in the United States. They were originally a niche car. People in Colorado buy them, people in Vermont buy them. He was out in the country, going in snow, going to the mountains. They love buying these things. They kind of got off track for a while and started putting those six cylinder engines that they have problems. And then psh, they got in a little bit of trouble with that, but now they seem to be going back to their roots and they know what they're doing. Got a decent sized camera, not something puny thing. Now, as we get on the road, we can see, hey, it's not overly high and it's certainly not low. As we go over my big lump, it doesn't drag anything. Got that Subaru sound. It does have a CVT. Now, I mean, a lot of cars do. If you want, look, you can put it in manual mode if you want and you can shift it yourself. It's got paddle shifters here. You want to go down, you go down. You want to go up. There it goes. Now realize, of course, that's fake shifting. It's a CVT, it doesn't have any gears, but it acts like it does to increase acceleration. You can manually do it. Now you'll notice, camera's kind of bouncing around. Hey, it's a subcompact crossover. They all bounce around. My Matrix bounces around. The CX-30 I drove the other day, it bounces around. They are bouncy vehicles. Doesn't bother me, but some people it bothers. It does have that horrible start, stop, and it just stopped, I hate that. But we're gonna try acceleration out with the CVT and a 2.5 liter engine, here we go. Not bad considering the engine had stopped and then it started again. So you really can't complain. It does have decent acceleration. You're just tiddling along and you step on the gas. It goes pretty fast. And as you corner, they are fun to drive. It does handle quite a bit better than a RAV4. I do have to agree. He didn't like the handling. He didn't like the rocking back and forth because it made his wife seasick. Now she admitted she didn't get seasick yet with him driving, but if she was with me driving like this, she probably would get seasick. <laughs> when you're going uphill, step on the gas, it picks up and goes. That is why they put the two and a half liter engine in. Four with the smaller engine, they barely got out of their own way. It's, it's fun to drive. It's got plenty enough zip when you step on the gas. And noise level, about average for one of these. They're not quite, quiet, they're not loud, loud. It's about average. You get a subcompact crossover SUV, then you're always a little bit on the noisy side. I mean, if you didn't like noise, you could also insulate it like I show in some of my videos. You can buy sound insulation and get it insulated if you want, it'll be a lot quieter. They don't put that much in them. The ride's perfectly fine. It's just the bumps you're gonna feel, but all of these, like I say, 
every single little subcompact SUV crossover is going to feel the bumps when you hit bumps on the road. That's just the nature of the beast. It's all wheel drive. It's a relatively short wheelbase. It's going to have a relatively rough ride on bumpy roads. The Subarus never got them stuck in the mud or stuck in the snow, and the RAV4 did. So that's one of the reasons he traded it in even for this. Okay, so what's my conclusion? Is the man insane for trading a RAV4 for this thing? In this case, no. He loves his wife, and she's not getting seasick. So that's reason enough, you know? Gets better gas mileage. Doesn't get stuck in the snow. This is where it snows all the time. Gets better gas mileage, and they're both 2.5 four-cylinder engines. One's a box or this, the other's an inline. But this gets better gas mileage. I've seen Subarus go to 300,000 miles, just like Toyotas. They can last a really long time, as long as you change the oil regularly. So really, not that bad of an idea. He just swapped even. Now, in terms of pure money, if he really wanted to, he probably could have sold the RAV4 for more and then bought this instead of trading it in. That's what I would have done. I'm more of a horse trader, you know. But still, they're interesting vehicles because they're based on a car. They're not being based on a truck. They're based on a car and they ride more like a car and they get better gas mods like a car too. The higher up they go, the more they weigh, the worse the gas mod. This isn't particularly high, and it gets pretty good gas mods for an SUV that's normal. There's no hybrid anything here. It can run a really long time. You don't have to worry about the hybrid system breaking. It's going to cost a small fortune to fix when it goes out. Subaru being the true mass producers of all-wheel drive systems throughout history, I don't think he's going to have any problems with that. Hey, maybe it wasn't such a stupid idea after all. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.